All right, this tutorial will make you much more efficient at writing input form code. You will benefit from three time-saving techniques. First, a magic reference of what functions are available. Second, automatic code generation. And third, code verification. These features are available in Visual Studio. They are not available in Input Form Builder. However, Form Debugger breaches this gap and it will allow you to use Visual Studio and all of these features to write your form code significantly easier. Here is a hypothetical form. And uh, what we want to do is uh, write some code which will show addresses for co-borrower in red color if there is a mismatch from addresses for borrower. Just as an example, this is what I did for this text box. But all I did is I wrote a txt present borrower uh, address for co-borrower has a red color. And normally how people write this code is they say something like this. If uh, the txt for uh, borrower is not the same as for co-borrower, something like this, uh, not equal to this dot text, then like this. And, uh, oops. So this is normally how it's written. Somebody just writes a bunch of if statements, they save the form, they go into the form, it's red. Now if I change it, now if I reload the form again, it's black. Now let's uh, do it a little bit differently and let's use form debugger to actually help us uh, to generate such code. So I'm launching form debugger it opens uh, a solution in which I can actually edit form code. I will not be able to load it into Encompass, but I will be able to actually write it and use all of the features from, from Visual Studio to write it instead of Form Builder. And what I want to do is I want to actually loop through text boxes and compare them. And uh, the way I actually named these text boxes is so that to make it easy to, for comparison, I named each borrower text box ending with a B and the same co-borrower text box ending with a CB, like so. And this is, for example, txt mailing city B and then txt mailing city CB. So what I'm going to do is uh, just not to put a bunch of if statements, I'm going to actually write a, a for loop and go through all of these text boxes. So what we'll do is, first, I know that there is a way to actually enumerate all of these controls. So what I'm doing right now is I'm typing find, uh, because I remember it starts with find, and I just don't remember the complete function name. And now I already see that uh, it's called find uh, controls by type. And uh, what I also see is that it returns me an array of control. So what this actually tells me is that I can do something like this. And as you may notice, I did not type find control by type completely. I pressed the tab and it generated the rest of the code for me. Now I know that this function returns an array of control. So I need to basically say dim ar as control, control. Now it's an array. And I'm going to assign it to what I just enumerated. Now I have my array going on. Now I need a control which I will be... And again, as you see, as I'm typing control, control, I can just tab out and then I got the rest of it typed for me instead of me typing. Now I'm going to put a for loop for each control in ARR. Now, what I need to do is I need to get a text box from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say text as text box equals control. Now, what I need to do is I need to check if it actually ends with B because I need to actually get borrower and co-borrower. So what I will do is I will say if ctrl.name ends, okay, name doesn't work. So what, what works, let's see, uh, name, name doesn't exist, must be an ID id control id so you see how I, I remembered there must be a name or id or something like this all i did is i pressed a dot and i started typing what i thought should be there and then uh, the rest popped up automatically so let me end this that's good 
Now NSVS has a string as a parameter. That's another cool feature of Visual Studio. It actually shows you what parameters functions have and what return values they have. So I'm going to say NSVS underscore B because that's what I'm looking for. Then, and uh, in my case, uh, what I will actually do is I will declare txt b equals to this control and then what I will do is I will actually say txt coborrower uh, equals uh, let's uh, do me dot find uh, uh, find control right because such function exists and it needs a control id but my control id is now different so it's actually control dot control id dot uh, uh, replace right so we need to change b with cb so all i'm doing is i'm saying b with cb and uh, it looks like i have two text boxes now now let's compare the text if txt b dot text is not equal to txt cb dot text then our txt cb for color equals color dot red and uh, just in case if we are going to reuse it multiple times let's uh, make it black otherwise now uh, that's my for loop that I just created now let's uh, do this let's delete the rest and here is uh, the code verification feature in Visual Studio if I had some kind of a problem like let's say Let's say I had a typo and I type CNTR OID. First, uh, at some point of time, Visual Basic would actually highlight it for me and it will show me I have a problem. But second, what's important about Visual Studio is you can always say build solution and then you can go into error list and see if there are any errors. So right now I know that this wouldn't work. And uh, here is an interesting part. Let's say I copy this code and I paste it into form builder. You will notice that I will get exactly the same error when code is actually loaded by Encompass. So I just copy pasted it, I say OK, I save the form. And now notice how this error says control ID is not a member of something, right? Let's go into Encompass. Let's click here. And guess what the error is? Control ID is not a member of uh, exactly the same error, right? So that's where Visual Studio will save you tremendous amount of time. It will capture all of these errors for you. And once you have no errors and it compiles, you will know that it would at least load in Encompass. So it saves you time on testing something, getting into all these weird errors, and then trying to figure out where did the error happen. Now let me copy this. Let me paste it here as, as I did. Let's click, say OK. Let's save it. And now let's go back into Encompass and let's reload the form. You see, I have one typo, which is my core soft instead of Microsoft. Now let's test this one. It was actually Microsoft instead of Microsoft. So I so I change it. I reload the form. You see both of them are red now. I hope you enjoyed this demo and I hope you liked uh, how what form debugger can do for you and I hope you'll use it for your encompass. Thank you.